All right, what is up? Let's take a look at finding the inverse of a quadratic function. So here we've got f of x is equal to x squared plus 4x plus 3 for x greater than or equal to negative 2. All right, so what's going to happen here is the quadratic is not one to one. But when we put this restriction there, x greater than or equal to negative 2, that's going to make it one to one. So if, we, if you look at this, this right here is a quadratic function that opens up. Okay, And I don't know what the y coordinate of the vertex is, but that, that doesn't matter. Let's just look. I, I know the x coordinate is going to be negative 2. So it's a parabola that opens like this. The vertex is somewhere. I don't know if it's above or below, but that's beside the point right now. All right, so let's look at this x greater than or equal to negative 2. Well, if you look at this parabola here, if you draw a horizontal line through it, you can see it's going to intersect in two places. So that makes it not one-to-one. -one. And remember, if a function's not one-to-one, -one, then that means it doesn't have an inverse. Okay? But if you can see what we're doing here, we're saying x is greater than negative 2. Well, here's negative 2. So what we're doing is we're changing the domain. We're restricting the domain to be x values larger than negative 2. So that means we're not using that part of the parabola. And so now the horizontal line only intersects in one spot. So that makes it a one-to-one -one function now. And now we can find the inverse. All right. So now let's go ahead and find the inverse. All right, but before we can find the inverse, we're going to have to take this quadratic function and put it in the vertex form. So let's go ahead and do that. So I've got f of x is equal to x squared plus 4x. And what I'm going to do is put that in parentheses like this and leave a little space and put the 3 out here. I'm going to group the x squared and the 4x together. You probably have an idea what I'm fixing to do. All right. So we're going to complete the square on this. So remember, to complete the square, we half the 4. So half of 4 is 2. And then you square it. So we half the 4. That gives us 2. And then 2 squared is 4. So I'm adding 4. And since I added 4, I have to come out here and subtract. Four. And then remember, this right here factors into x plus 2 squared, and then 3 minus 4 is negative 1. And so now I'm going to find the inverse. All right. So what do we do to find the inverse? Well, we change the f of x to y. So I've got y equals, and that's going to be x plus 2 squared minus 1. And then we swap the x's and the y's. So I've got x equals y plus 2 squared minus 1. And then I'm going to add 1 to both sides. So add 1 to both sides. And then that is going to give me x plus 1 equals y plus 2 squared. Okay. And then we're going to have to take the square root of both sides. So that's going to give me, let's come over up here and do it. That's going to give me, well, let's do it here. We've got y plus 2 equals the square root of x plus 1. All right, so don't forget this part. We use the square root property, okay? So it's not square root of x plus 1. It's plus or minus the square root of x plus 1. And then we have to do what? Well, we've got to subtract 2 to both sides, and that's going to give us 2 plus or minus 
the square root of x plus 1 equals y. All right. So let's go ahead and split this up. So that's going to give me y equals 2 plus square root of x plus 1. I'm sorry, not plus. It's going to be minus 2. My bad. Okay. All right. Or y equals negative 2 minus square root of x plus 1. Okay. See, it's minus 2. I'd accidentally put a plus 2, but it's minus. All right. So now our inverse, it can't be both of them, can it? It has to be one or the other. Well, that's where the restriction comes in. So what did we do here? Well, we restricted the domain of our function. We, sh we restricted the domain to be what? X greater than or equal to negative 2 which that's the same thing as negative 2 to infinity, okay? So what we're looking for is we're looking for our f inverse is equal to what? Well, the domain of the function f is the range of the inverse, okay? So when we look at both of these functions, which function has a range of negative 2 to infinity. Well, whenever we take the square root of something, we always get 0 or a positive number, okay, one or the other. So if we take negative 2 plus a positive number, that's going to give me answers larger than negative 2, which is what I need. And see, if I take negative 2 minus a positive number, that's going to give me values less than negative 2. So you can see this is not my answer. This one is. So that's negative 2 plus square root x plus 1. And so there is my inverse. All right, so I hope that video helped. Check out my other videos. Give me a like, share, and subscribe. And thanks for watching.